Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. Now, this week we are doing things a little bit differently because Hoopla just made a massive announcement the other day. So if you happen to be a Mylan Bourbon library card holder, or if you have a library card to any library that offers Hoopla Digital, you will be a beneficiary of said announcement. So for those who aren't familiar, uh, one of the services that Hoopla offers is what's called a binge pass. Now with binge passes, you can use one Hoopla checkout and then receive seven days of unlimited access to different licensed uh, services. So you could get a binge pass to Curiosity screen Stream or you could get a binge pass to great courses. Uh, they also have a binge pass for Hellosaurus for people who have littles. It's a great channel with loads of really good uh, kid-friendly content. And now, if you have a Hoopla account, you can also get access to a binge pass for the Hallmark Movies Now channel. That means with four to five checkouts out of your however many Hoopla checkouts you happen to have per month, you can get an entire month's worth of access to the Hallmark Movies Now channel. Uh, that is pretty awesome, especially if you happen to be a Hallmark Movies fan. Now, I know when I say Hallmark Movies, a lot of people currently think of, you know, the Hallmark romances, the, the Christmas movies that they put out an entire month's worth of in every December. And those are great films. If you happen to like, like the soft, fluffy uh, romances, fantastic. You have access to a huge slew of Hallmark's back catalog. Uh, you could watch movies for days and still have movies to watch left over. But what's really cool about the Hallmark Now channel is they also offer access, access to a number of television series, series like, um, let me just make sure I get this right, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, uh, Cedar Cove, the When Calls the Heart series, which I know, uh, at least within our patrons, is a hugely popular series, uh, and, and more shows like that. So you have access to all of those series. And then, this is my favorite part, you also get access to a huge swath of the Hallmark Hall of Fame films. I grew up loving the Hallmark Hall of Fame films in the 80s and the 90s, uh, just so you have a little bit of background. So Hallmark Hall of Fame films have been around since the 1950s. Uh, and at that time, they the company was called Hallmark Television Playhouse. And they were known for doing these much larger budgeted productions for mainstream television audiences that were adaptations of famous books and famous plays uh, that garnered attention and performances from really big name actors and big name, name directors, screenwriters. I mean, these were essentially like prestigious television films to be a part of. And again, not saying that the current roster of Hallmark films isn't a prestigious thing, but as far as film industry goes, these were the ones that were really getting awarded big time awards. Um, so over the course of the decades of the Hallmark Hall of Fame, they garnered, just so that we have the numbers exactly right, 81 Emmy Awards, dozens of Christopher and Peabody's, nine Golden Globes, and multiple, multiple Humanitas Prizes. And that's just naming a handful of things that people were awarded. It go, the list really does go on. Now, these films, as mentioned, were much bigger budget than your average at the time television show, uh, television movies. So you got, you knew if you were a part of this, you had bigger production values. You weren't slotted into really long promo tours. So if you were a working actor, this was a great thing to do because it was a limited amount of commitment, but still a massive audience because the numbers for these films were really very, very impressive for a television audience at the time. Um, these Hallmark films were also some of the very first things that were aired in color back in the 50s. Another really, really interesting tidbit. Uh, and this went on for a very long time. These have been aired at least a couple times a year all the way up through the mid 20 teens for the last few years, they really haven't been putting these together. And 
there's certainly been much less attention to them, mainly because we as audiences have moved on to other things. But you do have access to a very large library of these particular movies. And that's really what we're going to focus on today. If you happen to be a Hallmark Romance fan, never fear, because next month we're definitely going to look at um, the more contemporary Hallmark movies uh, and what ones I personally like the best of the, the ones offered. And we'll be doing that in a future episode. But yes, today is all about the Hallmark Hall of Fame films. Um, as always, of course, if you have a Milan Berlin library card, you can access all of these movies entirely for free. And with that, I want to go ahead and just jump into a couple of recs. Okay, my first Hallmark Movies Now recommendation for today is going to be 1987's Foxfire. Foxfire was adapted from an award-winning Broadway play by the same name uh, and starring the same two leads as the Broadway play, Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy. Now, you may not be familiar with them if you are a much younger viewer, but if you happened to grow up in the 80s or the 90s, they were massive, massive performers. Um, they were considered two of the great stage actors of the 20th century. Uh, Hume Cronin was really famous in mainstream audiences with his performance in Cocoon, Jessica Tandy, uh, Driving Miss Daisy, but they had been working Broadway actors for decades, even at that point, uh, massively lauded, loads and loads of awards. And uh, Hume Cronin actually was one of the co-writers for the Broadway play Foxfire. Now, his co-author, uh, Susan Cooper, she did the teleplay for this. So you're still talking about pretty much that same core team uh, putting this uh, television film production together. And you can absolutely tell in Foxfire, we're dealing with this aging widow who is still incredibly independent, very fierce and protective of her, her people. And she lives all alone on her pretty isolated farm. She lost her husband uh, a number of years before, but she still clings to his memory and still has conversations with him just, you know, to talk things out in her daily life. And her when we meet her, she her current major struggle is with this real estate developer who is very much strong, trying to strong arm her into selling her land, um, her land that's very much a part of her, a part of her husband, a part of her history. And in addition to this rather brash kind of, I guess, villain would be the best way to describe him. Uh, she's also dealing with her son and struggles that he's having in his life. Her son, who is played by the lovely John Denver. Uh, and and I should mention that music is a big part of the storyline as well. So they, they cast that very well. Uh, and, and so she's dealing with these two very different aspects of life from uh, and, and we get to see to see her struggle and to see how she doesn't buckle under pressure. And it's very much a star kind of vehicle for Tandy. Uh, she did end up winning, I believe, the Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress that year. Uh, the film also won Outstanding Art Direction. It was nominated for six other Emmys. Uh, it was also nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Miniseries or Television Film. Uh, and it did win a Peabody. Uh, but besides that, it was a chance for mainstream audiences to see Cronin and Tandy work together, uh, which was something you didn't always get to see because they were primarily Broadway and stage performers. We, they had worked together many, many times, but you didn't often get to see that if you weren't a theater goer. And of course, the theater is going to have a very limited audience. With this, they got millions of viewers and millions of people in the American public were able to see some first class acting just on TV. You didn't even have to pay to get a movie ticket. And that's pretty incredible when you think about it. And that had been sort of the idea and the impetus behind these Hallmark Hall of Fame productions from the very get go. Um, of course, it's a profiting kind of situation. But behind that even was the idea that the mainstream should be able to see these big 
you know, brilliant productions with incredible actors, and they shouldn't have to pay a whole lot of money to do so. And it shouldn't be limited to just a small elite section of uh, the population. And for years, we got to see that. Uh, the earliest productions from Hallmark's uh, line were adaptations of Shakespearean plays, you know, and again, not something you got to see on mainstream TV every day. Uh, so anyway, back to Foxfire. Their production ended up being so well lauded that Hume Cronin and Tandy were asked to be a part of another film adaptation for Hallmark in 1993, and that was the company's adaptation of Terry Kay's 1990 novel, To Dance with the White Dog, uh, which was also a really beautiful story of aging love and how people grieve and how they relate. And it, it, both of these films are really, really, really dependent on stellar performances from its leads. And you absolutely get that, uh, from Cronin and Tandy. And it's just really beautiful to watch. So if you do like simple stories, uh, play adaptations that are incredibly well done, uh, film that relies heavily on music to some extent, definitely check out Foxfire. It is one of those movies that it's quiet and it's simple, but it's really, really beautiful and will absolutely make you feel by the time the credits start to roll. Okay, so my next recommendation is for the 1996 film, The Boys Next Door. Boys Next Door is based on a successful Broadway play and the storyline doesn't change in a, a huge amount. We are focusing on this very kind uh, social worker named Jack. Jack is played by Tony Goldwyn of Scandal fame and he his primary job is to care for four men in this group home. All four men are developmentally disabled to some extent and are very independent, but also depend on him for a number of different things. And Jack really feels like these men are his family. He spends a huge amount of heart and an even larger amount of time caring for them, being a part of their lives. And this is something that he struggles to juggle with his day-to-day -day life with his wife and, you know, the stresses that these two worlds colliding can sort of, and the way that they can manifest. When we meet Jack, he is really at a crossroads where he is concerned that the amount of time he's dedicated to his job and these friends is is overwhelming the relationship that he has with his wife. So it, it leads to a number of very difficult decisions and how those decisions affect the four men who are in his care. Now, as mentioned, Jack is played by Tony Goldwyn, who is an excellent, excellent actor. If you've ever watched Scandal, he's fantastic in it, but he's also been in a huge number of other films and television series, very much a well-respected actor in the industry. And the four men that he cares for are played by Nathan Lane, Courtney B. Vance, Robert Sean Leonard, and Michael Jeter. I mentioned this one in particular, uh, and this was one of the first ones that came to mind precisely because of this cast. Now, in the current roster of Hallmark films, you're usually dealing with a very reliable stable of actors, great performers. They are people that Hallmark knows relate well to the audience, that the audience responds well to, uh, and that they slot them into productions, not necessarily thinking about things your typical casting director would think of, like who's the best fit for this specifically from a large swath. You've got your stable of actors that you know and you like, and that's really who you from whom you pick. Now, Boys Next Door was very clearly looking at things in a very different way, as were most of these productions from the 80s and the 90s. These are actors who, if you look at their credits and you look at their accolades, are off the charts from what you think of people being in a made-for-TV movie would, would be. You have 
multiple Tony Award winners, multiple Obie winners, multiple Emmy winners, multiple SAG Award winners, multiple Golden Globe winners, multiple Peabody winners, and the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, Nathan Lane has won something like four or five Tonys. Uh, Michael Jeter had won multiple Tonys. I mean, these are people whose, whose lives were stage work and putting forth these kinds of performances that are remembered, that are awarded for a reason, and that the fact that you have all of them in one production is a little bit crazy when you think about it. Um, again, when you think of made-for-TV films, you don't really think of films that can garner attention within the industry that would get these kinds of performers. Uh, but that's precisely what the Hallmark Hall of Fame did at that particular time. Um, the production is, as you could probably guess, incredibly well acted, very, very well directed, uh, and is just in general one of those films that even if you remove yourself from the idea of this was made with a bigger budget than your average TV movie in the 90s would have been made, those performances, you just it wouldn't matter how good the money was for the, all the production. If you didn't have those performances, this would not work. And it feels much more like a film stage production to me anyway, than your average TV movie. So if you're looking for something with a really lovely story about, um, a man at a crossroads in his life, if you're looking for ridiculously good acting. And this was one of those movies that introduced me to the performance of uh, Michael Jeter, who's no, sadly no longer with us. He He's one of those actors, every time he plays a role, whether it's something comedic like in the TV uh, sitcom Evening Shade, or uh, these small, very character-driven roles, like he was in Green Mile, and good grief, the role he played in that. Uh, and, and even the role that he plays here in The Boys Next Door, it's just, it's just a tour de force. It is a masterclass in performance. So if you're looking for that kind of experience, I strongly recommend this. It's, it's just one of those films that you can't say enough good things about the acting. And it's one of my picks of the week, I think. So I know I've really been focusing on the acting in these particular films or in the production values or the production teams. But that is not to say that the Hallmark Hall of Fame films were entirely devoid of romance. That's simply not the case. And my final recommendation today, which is 1997's Rose Hill, I think would appeal just as much to any of uh, the contemporary viewers of Hallmark romances. Um, Rose Hill is a very lovely romantic movie that is based on Julie Garwood's best-selling book, For the Roses, and it takes place in the late 1800s. The story, as it opens up, we are following four orphaned young men. Uh, they're just boys, really, in New York, and they're, uh, they're essentially brothers through heart, if not by blood, and they're, you know, having loads and loads of struggles when they suddenly come upon an abandoned baby. She's just all on her own. And these four boys who, again, have loads of their own troubles, uh, part of which is, is, she, is constantly attempting to avoid the police, uh, decide to take in this baby and raise her as their own. Uh, they are able to get out of New York and they end up moving out west and they build a life together. So yes, there is definitely romance within this film, but it's also in a, a largely family, found family kind of film and about those dynamics and how these young boys grow into men and how they have to sort of figure out how to raise another child in addition to themselves. And it's it's really just kind of a warm, fluffy film that is really a, a, a nice, gentle watch. Uh, you also have a number of familiar faces within the cast. Uh, Mary Rose, the baby that these boys raise, grows up to be Jennifer Garner. Uh, Jennifer Garner is, of course, a brilliant and lovely actress, and this is one of her very first films. 
Uh, and, and she does a very serviceable, very serviceable job with the role. Uh, and within the brothers, you get Justin Chambers, who uh, a lot of people might know as Alex Karev in Grey's Anatomy. Uh, you also have Zach Orth, uh, Tristan Chait, and Jeffrey D. Sams, who are also very well-known character actors. They've been in number a number of films since this particular production. Uh, and and you, so you do have this cast of very young actors at the time, and they were just <laughs> so young when they made this. Uh, but it, it's interesting to see how their performance has grown since this movie. And just in general, they work very well as a family dynamic, all of them together. They, they, you can definitely feel the bond that is between all of them. And the story is, of course, it's based on a romance novel. It's not something out of left field. It's, it's not, it is not unpredictable how the storyline goes, but it is very, very well performed and enjoyable to watch. Uh, so yeah, this is, just one of many, many romantic films within the Hallmark Hall of Fame uh, list. I just happen to enjoy this one because it's fun seeing these faces that I know so well from other roles. Uh, and I think you'll enjoy it as well. So uh, 1997's Rose Hill, definitely a must watch. Okay, so those were my recommendations for today's uh, Hallmark Movies Now Binge Pass uh Hallmark Hall of Fame focused <laughs> recommendation list. If you happen to have any recommendations that fit that criteria, please recommend them down below in the comments. If you have recommendations for me, for what you would like to see us do uh, in the future, make sure that you comment with those themes below as well. Uh, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I'd not had the chance to explore the, uh, binge pass before this, uh, before pre preparing for this week. So it was really fun to get to go through the Hallmark Movies Now catalog. Again, I will absolutely be doing uh, more recommendations of other films in the future. Uh, so please be sure to check in. Again, thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>